Howdy folks, it's General Solfax and you're watching an episode of War Thunder Simulator Battles. In the last episode I featured a Japanese plane so I thought it would be very suitable to feature an American plane this time and what better plane to feature than what has to be one of the more peculiar aircrafts in the game. This is the Curtis Wright XP-55 Ascender and what it basically is, is a pusher aircraft. It's a very innovative design for that time. This aircraft was created in response to a proposal made by the United States Army Corps in 1939. What the Army wanted was a fighter aircraft with improved performance, visibility and an armament over existing fighters. The biggest problem was the difficulty in constructing this aircraft. Even though the first three prototypes and the only three prototypes showed great promise in both dive capability and just raw speed, the thing is they were so difficult to mass produce, the project was eventually dropped after the first three prototypes crashed and burned and surprisingly a lot of people died in those crashing and burning sequences. Crashing and burning sequences? What am I saying? Doesn't matter, let's talk about this replay and the aircraft that we have in game. But before we start talking about this replay, I need to tell you that this is not me flying this aircraft. This is a certain Mr. Tortoise 167, whom we will refer to as Bob for the rest of this video. Now, as we gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the replay and the plane itself a little bit more. So Bob is flying his XP-55 on the Normandy map and he decided to defy the usual meta of climbing to around 4k before starting to engage targets and he dove down almost immediately after spawning to build up some speed. Now, this plane since 1.5.3 dropped has been complained about by the player community and some people might say that this plane is a tad bit broken, maybe a bit UFO-ish and maybe a bit overpowered, but let's not jump to conclusions. What's special about this aircraft in the game is that it stands at 3.0 battle rating and for its battle rating it's an extremely fast aircraft. It can outrun almost anything at sea level and it can even outdive a Focke Wolf A1 which is amazing. Another thing that's very good about this aircraft is its armament. It's consisted of two 20mm cannons and two 50 cal machine guns that are all located nice and tightly in the nose. So this aircraft is a very good long range sniper as well as very accurate at close ranges. So keeping all that I've said in mind, you would assume that your average player would use this airplane as a boom and zoom style fighter, and I've gotta say this, Mr. Bob is definitely not your average player. The way Mr. Bob flies this aircraft in this match is very straightforward. He tries to keep this aircraft as fast as humanly possible, and with an aircraft that is this fast and has this amazing of an energy retention, that's not a very hard task to do. Now here he spots what I assume is a German aircraft parked on the middle airfield on this match, which is the airfield on this map is it's just pointless. I don't know why it's here. It just it's owned by the Axis at the beginning of any match, and then it's owned by the Allies at the end of any match. It's almost impossible to protect it as the Axis player. You just need to concentrate on trying to kill those little boats that are going to capture it later in the match. So basically, I really don't know why it's here. But yeah, he's diving down on the airfield and reaching some really amazing speeds. And now you will see how accurate these guns are. He starts shooting at, at almost one kilometer's range and only as he gets very close he's able to put guns on target. He scores his first kill, well, very easily. So that was his first and by far the easiest kill he will have in this match. And one of the things that I noticed while playing mid to early tier simulator battle matches is that for whatever reason most of the matches just evolve into one big continuous furball and I don't know why that happens, probably because players are not as experienced and they basically don't know how to spot planes, they are not very adept at spotting planes at distances, so the easiest thing to do is when you see a cluster of planes you know that there has to be enemy planes in that area, the easiest thing to do is just go towards them and try to engage them. But keeping that to the side, Mr. Bob here is going very fast at the moment because he wants to engage that very big nasty pile of fighters over there. They're actually fighting over friendly air, excuse me, friendly boats which are providing AA fire which is, uh, well it's very helpful because AA fire is one of the greatest means of communication, excuse me, identification of planes in the simulator battles. I just miss, just continue mispronouncing stuff in this replay, what's up with that? So Mr. Bob just saw a friendly fighter go down, which means that somewhere in this area there's gotta be at least one enemy fighter. So he goes in a very wide turn and tries to locate this enemy fighter, 
and I think this is where he sees them. Yes, this is a BF109 E3, a very unlucky BF109 E3, because although BF109 E3 is a good airplane at this battle rating, it's definitely not good enough to outmaneuver and outrun a XP55. So a few shots into his fuselage sets him on fire, but what's been happening since 1.53 dropped is that for whatever reason, planes have become more fire resistant and <laughs> when you set something on fire, that's not the usual death sentence that it used to be as you will see in just a second. There, that BF-109E, that's the same aircraft and it's not on fire for whatever reason. Uh, is that a good change? Well, I think it's a decent change because it used to be when you somebody sets you on fire, you're definitely gonna die and it, it doesn't matter how skilled your crew is at repairing, another shot kind of misses there but he still has enough, enough energy to go up and do another loopy loop and try to get on his 6 again. Luckily for that BF-109E, he does manage to get away from Mr. Bob. But the thing is, he's not gonna get very far, as you can see in just a few seconds. There, he crashes right there, and that's Mr. Bob's second kill. And there's gonna be more of those, oh trust me. Now, this furball is already spent up, there's not any single enemy aircraft in this furball at this moment. So the best thing Mr. Bob can do and what he does is he goes in a spiral dive, gets some altitude and looks around himself to see if he can find some more targets. So looking back at the airfield in the middle of the map, he does spot in just a second another target on the airfield. This time it's a BF-109 F2 I believe. Unlike the last strafe that he did over this airfield, the AA guns are actually active and this target is not stationary. He's actually trying to take off and he's gonna have a lot of trouble with doing so. So Mr. Bob goes in a very steep dive here, tries to get guns on target but he gives up on the last second and goes for a very very fast turn. I mean this thing when at speed can turn like a beast so he's on the 6 of that BF-109 F2 gets a nice spray in him and there's his third kill in the match that was very very fast I mean this aircraft when at nice speed when you're going over 500 kilometers an hour can turn like a beast so so far we've gathered that this plane is one of the fastest plane at its battle rating that it can dive like a beast that given its initial speed advantage it can turn with the best of them and that it's a very good climber also it has very good guns so what's bad about this aircraft? Well, I don't know. I just simply don't know what's bad about this aircraft. In this match, you will see how much clubbing he can do with one single load of ammunition. Now, he spots what appears to be two BF-109s here and the bottom one decides to dive down, but he uses his speed to get on the six of this other BF-109. And there you saw how easily he was able to climb up there and use that little energy that he had. So now he tries to take aim at this BF-109, fires a burst, and for the look of it, I assume that this BF-9 was on fire, but that's not the BF-109. The BF-109 actually lost its aileron, and he's not able to recover from this dive, so there is a fourth kill for Mr. Bob. So this is more kills, this is actually equal number of kills that I've ever gotten any given simulator battle match, but the fun is not over. Right away he spots another BF-109 E3, puts another shot into him, and there's almost very close to his 5 kills. He got his aileron, I think, and he's unable to maneuver, he gets very close, tries to put another shot into him, but he goes up to regain some altitude on him and to get back on his sticks for an easier shot. He's still on that BF-109 F2, what appears to be, look at the shot, he just waits for him to finish with his turn and puts another nice shot into his fuselage, getting himself the 5th kill and sniping his pilot very easily. And so far we've seen that Mr. Bob is an amazing freaking pilot and using this plane to its fullest abilities. If you're not familiar with simulator battles, if you've never played simulator battles before, you might start thinking that this seems all a bit too easy and it really does seem a bit too easy mr bob is flying this plane to its fullest potential using both its speed and maneuverability excellently and amazingly but also he's being very very lucky because right there you see what keeps happening to him every single time he sees an airplane it's because that airplane just flew into his crosshairs and he's immediately on his six and just people s keep serving their planes up to him on a silver platter and he's like okay i'm gonna take it but yeah he's again on a six on what appears to be a bf 109 f1 or f2 and that's basically a dead sentence for the bf 109 he's getting very close to him gets his aim puts a few shots into his fuselage lights him on fire and there is a six kill in the match i mean six kills in one single match without reloading your plane that's amazing and again 
another aircraft just gets in his crosshairs and he's able to follow him and I mean he's being very lucky in this match but yeah this time it's a Focke Wolf 190 the first one he's seen in this match he takes aim and this is a very nice shot he just tears through that Focke Wolf 190 and gets his seventh and final kill in this match I have to say this is an amazing result to be had in a single simulator battle match without even having to reload your plane I mean this is just amazing thank you Mr. Bob actually Thank you Mr. Tortoise167 for sending me this replay, it's been my pleasure to view it and make a video from it and I hope everybody enjoyed watching this video. My name has been General Solfax and I will see you next time.